gonna try to get in this little backwater back here. It's, it's really low right now. It's like a foot low. Normally, if it was at full pool, you'd probably be no problem getting in there. But uh, I couldn't troll in there with the trolling motor. But a lot of times, you get the boat up and on pad, you can get across the sandbar. So let's see if we can get see if we can get it across there. Got to come at the right angle. here it drops off to like two and a half three foot you can see like we, we pretty much got stuck right there you would never got through there on the on the trolling motor one of my favorite banks is right here between here and like that little point right there on the right, I used to always get a couple of three bites. So like when you look across the bank right here, you don't see anything. You know, you don't see anything in the water. One of my best ways to catch them back then is almost like how y'all catch redfish. You see how there's mud along the bank where there's always like minnows and stuff and brim. And it would be like minnows and brim. And they would run those minnows and brim up on that, up on the, on the, on the mud. I, th I think you can catch a couple now. I'm, I've caught them down that way, but I'm pretty sure there's some fish in these holes. Oh, that must be a good one, bro. Oh God, that's a big one, bro. That is a freaking giant. Listen at him hit the boat. For the river, that is a big, big one. Look at that thing. About to get down to get him. I had him on the spear point, so he should be locked in pretty good. Oh, look at that thing. I always hold my good ones upside down like that. He almost looks pre-spawn. Always, people always ask how you, how you can tell if a fish is spawning or if it's pre-spawn. Always look at the dorsal pectoral fins, see if they look beat up. You can see this one looks a little bit, a little bit, harmed a little bit look at that one i feel like these fish may even still be in the pre-spawn phase that's a solid one for the river on my gremlin this is a bay i've been working on with z-man for a long time it actually has one of the tentacles pulled off i got one today black and blue gremlin just flipping it in a lay down oh he's spicy he's got a little bit of lemon zest oh man just a bite like that helps me put the, uh, the pieces of the puzzle together. Anytime you fish in a new body of water, that's what you gotta do. Catch one fish, that one fish tails on the next fish, and you start to piece together what's going on. So I was trying to get into some of these backwaters. Wasn't really working out that good because the water's so low, I couldn't really access anything, which kind of me makes me think, there's probably not that much forage, not that much life in there. So I came out to the main river. First lay down I came to that was isolated that's the key. It was isolated. I got a bite. And just flipping this creature bait in here, this is a Z-Man Gremlin. It's uh, basically a four, four and a quarter inch, maybe four and a half inch bait. Four out hook, just a straight up tungsten bullet sinker, nothing fancy. With I don't really, anytime I'm fishing somewhere new, I just use common sense baits. I don't use a lot of fancy stuff, not big swim baits, not a lot of big stuff. I use stuff that, that fish would normally be eating. I study the the habitat, the forage, what they would be eating and just match my baits accordingly. So being stained water, probably brim forage is what they're gonna be eating here. Creature baits should work pretty good. So I'll just try to duplicate that. I'll go to more isolated laydowns like what I just fished, see if I can get another bite. Of this stuff right in here has been good in the past but honestly it's been a long time since i caught one here oh shad i never see that huh 
something jumped anyway. I believe I could catch one more big one somehow. That should have been lights out. There he is. Big one too. I knew it was going to be one around that thing. I knew it was going to be one there. Dude, I flipped it in there and the line just goes completely slack. Completely slack. I'm gonna flip it back in there because this could be the buck. It could be a buck. That's just a pound and a half. I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger because I hit him and it was just stuck. Flip it back in there. That feels like the buck. See how slow you gotta go though. I flipped that thing, flip, flip, flip. And finally he got it. But I had to flip it. Like I had to. I had to. I had to police them. At least I had to run and start with enough water when I was outside. Now I'm back here where there's no water. But I gotta figure out how to get my boat up and out so I can get over the sandbar. It is a little bit deeper here, but it ain't that much deeper. Getting up. It might be you, you brought your pillow and sleeping bag. You might, you might sleep back here. Let's see. Just left just didn't have enough water i feel like to support any type of life right now this one looks like it has more of a more of a channel a little bit deeper water so maybe i have you know you need some volume of water to be able to preserve any type of life forage fish the fish that you're fishing for itself let's go up here and see if i can catch one Less than I do because every bite I've gotten has been like really shallow on these lay downs. Even that first one I caught, he was pushed back in that lay down a good ways. Maybe we can use that for future knowledge. If it's an isolated lay down, there's probably a bass on it right now. Damn, bro, he got it. No, he's still on it. I'm gonna try to get over. Did you see how big that sucker was, Cam? Cam, I'm gonna lose it. Tree. Bro, that's a freaking giant. I think he finally got off, yeah. God dang it. I can't get off of the tree. <laughs> He's off now. Did you see that sucker? Oh damn. Dang it. Bro, I told you it was one on that tree, didn't I? I just kept picking it apart, picking it apart. I fished like this thing goes all the way out here. I fished all of it, all of it. Finally got a bite. That was a freaking giant. Oh, I need some bigger line. I couldn't, like, I couldn't turn it around. Dang, bro. Did you hear me? Oh, my God. I tried to, like, loosen the bell, like, let him run so it wouldn't break the line, and it, it just, there's nothing I could do. Bro, I still might want to go back home and get the right equipment and come back. <laughs> Jeez. Bro, how, how many pitches to that tree do you think I made? A lot. A lot. Oh, dang, that broke my heart right there. I need bigger line. I need a bit, I need a better setup now. I didn't think I didn't think we were gonna be running in that size fish. I usually don't catch that size down here. Oh my camera right. Man. I don't have any more of those gremlins, but I got I got the goat. Dude, that thing was in behind there. 
If it's an isolated laydown, there's probably a bass on it right now. God, that was a big one. I should have. I don't know what else I could have really done different other than have 25 pound tests on. Then the tro then my trolling motor was hung up in the freaking in the tree, so I couldn't move. It was not exemplary professionalism there at all. You could have just been in a little bit of a better spot. Yeah, like why you won't be way back up in here? I think it's fun. I think that's that's the buck. That's the buck. They're spawning. Bingo. I'm going to tell you two reasons I know they're spawning. So I just had the bigger one on. This is the buck right here. They just told me everything I need to know. I've always noticed that bucks, when the fish are spawning, they have red eyes. The clearer the water, the brighter the red. The water's a little stained, so it's not going to be quite as bright here. But you can see his eyes. It has that reddish hue in it. That's all, I don't know why that happens, but I've just noticed over the years when fish are spawning, their eyes turn red. So they just told them themselves. Now, I would have never got another bite if that would have been, you know, like just a random fish that I caught anywhere. These fish are spawning on these riverbanks. Yeah, that's what's going on. They just told them themselves now. So I used to have these little stretches that you would just about count on for a bite. I'm sure a lot of y'all can relate to uh, fishing a place like this. When it's tough like this, like one lay down by itself like that. Why would you flip it up there about that? I'll give you three things that you probably can do that'll help you. When you get in a situation like this where you're fishing a place where you feel like there's really not that many fish, uh, you feel like it's highly pressured, or sometimes it's just tough. It's at that terrible time of the year like it is right now. Number one. I always start to look for the very obvious things, very isolated things. In this situation, I'm fishing isolated laydowns, the ones that I can find by themselves. On your body of water, that might be the isolated dock. Could be a bridge piling, but look at the really obvious thing. A lot of times, there's fish setting on things that are really not that complicated. Secondly, reduce your base. Yes, you heard me, reduce. I like they used to tell us in school, reduce, reuse, and recycle. You gotta stop using so many different baits and so many different techniques. The tougher it gets, the more simple you need to get. Other thing that I always study when I'm going to a new body of water is the forage fish for that body of water. What do the fish eat? Are they eating brim? Are they eating shad? And where I'll study that particular forage fish. I'll learn where they live and their spawning habits. That's gonna point me in the right direction of how deep and where I should be fishing. So knowing what the fish are gonna be feeding on is always key. The body of water that I'm fishing today, with it being a stained water river, most likely, you know, they're probably gonna be eating stuff that, that's uh, like brim. They're probably gonna eat small worms, crustaceans, crawdads, anything like that that crawls around on the bottom because it's a stained body of water. Most likely it's not gonna be a shad forage here, but uh, brim, bluegill, uh, there are some gizzard shad and for sure crawdad, small crustaceans. So creature baits uh, are gonna work really good. Anything that resembles a panfish, probably be a good choice for these baits. Cause that's how you're gonna decide what you fish and how deep you fish by what the fish are actually eating. You know one that's a sleeper is just knowing what type of fish are in the body of water. Obviously if it's small mouth in that body of water, you, you're gonna know to target that lake a different way than if there's largemouth. The smallmouth, you might look for swift current, or you might look for the clearest water, knowing that smallmouth are more visual feeders. If you know it's heavily populated with largemouth, I personally would look for grass, if it has grass. If it doesn't have grass, I would look for more stained water, because I know largemouth like to post up behind shallow wood docks and structure like that. So I'm always paying attention to what type of fish is in the body of water. And then I like to target my baits and my tactics, what I'm gonna use, the lures for the day, where I'm gonna look. It's all designed around what the species, the target species is for fishing that day.